Welcome back, everyone, to Tiano, the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Tiano, Mexico lover. But we got Roblox. You know, when things started, Salinas chalked it up as just a minor bump. One of those rare one in a million chances that happened, but never actually caused any long term problems. But there comes a certain point where those coincidences seem to have been more than simply that. Sure, our Daz, Madraz, and their cronies may vote together to block his agenda once or twice, but then it's followed by mass amounts of squabbling. Now imagine, to his surprise, that he was hearing rumors that the two of them united against him. Him, of all people. What did they think he was? He knew that the longer this pact existed, his influence would dwindle more and more. Each passing day did nothing but to serve as a reminder to that fact. But that didn't mean he would lie down and let those two dismantle him his chances. Or Raul just needed to find something that would take the fact to them. He predicted it wouldn't take much to make the two factions return to their shouting matches. All he could do now is wait. Mexico would drive over all bumps like it always has. But the, th the war has kicked off and they're doing okay. I am concerned though, because we can't send volunteers. The Dominican Republic has six divisions. These guys have four. A minor headache. Mateo strolled around his office, taking a look outside the window and trying to steer his mind clear <clears throat> to focus on the predicament in front of him. Sure, he had tried and tried to keep both sides happy, but there were some things that were bound to fall apart eventually. Technically, there was always countless numbers of economic proposals to choose from, but they all fell into two general camps. On one end, Ardaz Madrazo proposed to continue with the old policies of investment in the countryside, all the while cutting the weaker parts of the budget and rallying the party around him. And also something he personally could get behind, as well as many of the old members of the PRI, but there was another option that, while he might not like, might be necessary. Salinas, who was in the second camp, rallied his technocrats around him and was more radical in terms of how, how far he wanted to go. Restructuring the web of the Mexican economy itself, Lopez Mateos wanted to dismiss it entirely, if not for the economists in a circle being in overwhelming support of the idea. He couldn't tiptoe around the camps any longer, and now he had to pay the price of choosing one side or the other. Why change something that works perfectly? The Kabuki crisis will continue to evolve. I don't trust that economist. Found in the Decisions tab and Leviathan GUI. So we go with this way. Lower interest rates. I like the better growth. I like that we get more better civilian spending factor. Interest rate powers will increase, which is fine. Interest rates will decrease, which is great. GDP will increase. We lose all the stability. That's nothing, basically, compared to what we need here. I really don't like this one, but lower interest rates. It's an economic orthodoxy that nearly everyone agrees with in these times of financial trouble. Interest rates must be lowered to ease the burden down, borne by the debtors, many of whom are on the brink of insolvency. With well, the weight of crushing debts lying, we will, they will have a chance to regain their financial footing. Simultaneously, borrowing will appear a much more desirable option to investors, and the more significant investment that will result will help grow the country out of the pit it is in. Some disagreements exist within the party to the extent of the rate cuts, but the situation is urgent and action is needed now. So what do we have here? Oh crap. The Kabuki crisis, once a simple economic crisis, now is a political price to pay too. To deal with it, we must sway the various interest groups to our side. Selecting a faction will, will, in, to, will toggle decisions for the factions relevant to the current crisis state for current state of the Kabuki crisis. Uh, the party of bureaucracy prefers Ordaz. Industrious prefers Salinas. Workers prefer Madrazo. And the DFS prefers Salinas. To intensify negotiation efforts. Interesting. Pack strength increased by five. We're, oh, we get more weekly stability. Hmm. Crisis continues. So now completely lose stability. Oh, oh boy. Crackdown on subversive elements. Prevents Salinas from making moves. Which we'll probably need. Pack strength will decrease. So, um, there's all that stuff going on. Interesting. Show pack strength decisions. Well, um, how, how do we know how strong the pact is? Do we have anything here? No. How much longer do we get into Eiji Dos? Oh, that's quite a while. I'll close out of this for now, too. So, contact CTM leadership. Worker support will increase. Devote money to the CTM central. Promise to uphold the system of quotas. I promise as part of the legacy of a great revolution to uphold the system of quotas. Distribute the CTM pamphlets. Advocate for strengthening Article 123. Mobilize the corporate membership. Offer an increase in the minimum wage. Offer political postings to activists. And then mix messaging. Ooh, we lose stability for more political power. Question experience. 
Ordaz will gain support and Madraz will lose support among any factions where Madraz has more support than Ordaz. Deliberate sabotage. All factions will decrease. A firm pack commitments. Better weekly stability, which is really good. 7% more stability, that's pretty good. And more political power. The pack member with the highest support from each faction will gain additional support. Hmm. That sounds pretty good to me. Risk revolutionary rhetoric. Get 14 more political power out of this. That seems pretty good to do. Overall. Flex the establishment. Less stability. Action support. Oh. So. The Kabuki effect. Not good. Leviathan. This is where we really test everything out. Because the last time we saw everyone was pretty loyal to us so far. Oh boy, now we're really testing the crap out of them. Kabuki. Ah! Crest begins. Already dubbed as the Kabuki effect within Mexican circles, the ripple effects of the Asuda crisis have led to minor economic and political people in Mexico due to a series of layoffs and bankruptcies following by protests and demonstrations. The unexpected event is a very expected consequence that has conveniently happened in the closing stages of the battle to lead the PRI. The contender candidates are pulling all the remaining cards and favors, creating new webs of political alliances, and taking to shitty backroom deals as the chess board began moving in, in the end of the succession battle nears. This minor crisis will undoubtedly be the, the defending last act, defining last act that seals the immediate fate of Mexico. Crisis build ups. <clears throat> the country is in shambles. The government is in shock, and the people are angry. We can try to explain that aid is coming, but the people can't accept it. They believe that they've been left behind by us. As the Kabuki effect continues, the government has selected an economic plan to make sure the country stays afloat in these trying times. As the protests continue, the chances of these plans working correctly decrease, and the more harm to our economy is created, if gone unchecked. These protests will escalate into unmanageable levels. The survival of the miracles in your hands, Your Excellency. Although we don't have enough of our player ready, the mild economic setbacks brought on by this Kabuki effect are now the cause of growing social unrest. We must prepare for anything, for we do not know how bad things will get in the coming months before this crisis ends. The crisis will end. Just as the crisis should, this is the one brought on by the shockwaves of the Japanese economic disaster is coming to a close. The light of the end of the tunnel is coming, and with it comes peace and prosperity, but we should always remain wary of more surprises along the way. So tension is 40. It does not give any effect. Higher tension will help Salinas sway factions to his side, where lower tension will make them favor the establishment more. So that's good to know. We want a lower tension for this campaign. Pack strength. And above 80 will ensure Madraza's supremacy in the pact, whereas a pack strength below 20 will weaken the pact, leaving Ordaz a stronger individual. As long as either Ordaz or Madraza sway the industrialist party of bureaucracy and the workers, their plans will continue unaltered. However, they must sway the DFS to this individual side for the final victory. So, we need low pack strength if we want to go with Ordaz. Um, I don't know. I, I think... I know some people want me to go with Madraz early. I think I might just go Ordaz. I was telling you like the easy route. And a first campaign, every every time you play something like this, when I like to do redo these campaigns, try and get another person. It's easy. It, no, relatively easy. Simple. I think I might just go continue going Ordaz for the most part. We're in favor of the U.S., right? So... Uh, so we want <clears throat> low pack strength and low tension. Low tension, low pack strength. That's our goal. So we'll increase pack strength, but we don't want low pack strength. Increase. Because I do like the extra political power. You get weekly stability, though. That's what's really nice. Uh huh. All factions, strength will increase, tension will decrease. So if we do this one, you get 14 political power, but you know, it's not great. <coughs> Pack strength will increase, but support for him will go down. Deliberate sabotage, Pack strength will decrease, tension will increase, unfortunately. All factions support for Madraza will decrease. Question experience. Decrease pack strength. Uh, DFS support for Ordaz will increase. This one seems really good to do. Question experience. That seems really good. Mixed messaging. Tension will decrease. Mm. Offer political postings to activists. Worker support will increase. Uh, cronyism? Mm. Where's worker power right now? Honestly, as long as they're loyal, we'll be okay. It's 
Let's show support will slightly decrease, decrease. Worker support for them. Attack decrease. Worker support for Madrazo will increase. The worker support for Daz will increase. Tension decreases. Worker support will increase. I don't know if I want to do that one. Worker support for Daz will increase. That's good to do. What is this? Crackdown and subversive elements. Prevent Salinas from making moves. Uh, less party loyalty. Corrosion goes down. Less uh, industrialist loyalty. Corruption goes down. Basically, that does for everything. DFS loyalty will increase. Criminality very slightly decrease. Tension does go up. And back strength does go down. They lose some weekly stability when selected. When removed, it uh, helps pretty much everyone out. Uh, well, we can do that. Intensify negotiation efforts. Party. Uh, da, 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 da. DFS loyalty will slightly decrease. Pack strength will increase. You get some stability. DFS support from Ordaza Madrazo. Madrazo will slightly decrease and decrease the tension. Well, I've already chosen quite a few of these already. Mm. Pack strength will increase. I'd like this one, do I? Uh, affirm commitments. Pack member with the highest support from each faction will gain additional support, so. We need to work on industrialists, making the industrialists like or does more, as well as worker support. Worker and industrialists. Worker and industrialists. Specifically. Worker. I don't want to uphold the system of quotas, though. Worker, industrialist. Yeah. I think we'll keep it that for now. And we're killing each other here, too. One more dance. Madrazo and Ordaz were ecstatic with the victory of the pack, but for obvious reasons, they kept this jubilation to themselves. Mateos looked at the pair from across the desk, pushing forward a short stack of papers to Ordaz before repeating the process to Madrazo. This trouble has, been, has a definite consequence for Mexico, but before you can fix a problem, you must know how bad it is. You too. Lopez and Mateos pointed at the papers he slid to them. We'll be in charge of that, both in ascertaining the severity of the damage and the route to fix it, bringing your findings to me as soon as you have them dismissed. The pack leaders grabbed their stacks and moved out, discussing with each other what to put first. Another wing of the National Palace. Salinas was less than pleased. He accepted that travesty of a proposal. The two of them will just make it all worse. First they're packed, and then this. Everything was going smoothly. Everything. Then those two just had to destroy everything I worked on. He fell back into his chair, his clenched fists, and let go. They think they can get away with this. W against him, too. They had another thing coming. Salinas picked up this pen and went back to work. He was down, but he will not be out. Or Daz will try and assume power over Madraza by the end of the crisis. So where we have this? Northeast and southeast. So up here, what type of project do we want? So we're pretty evenly split for the most part for urban. Uh, migration is pretty high. Quality of life in the rural areas is not good. Uh, base stimulation is 60.24, which is not bad. And agriculturally, it's a little more cash crops. So what do we got here? Base stimulation goes up, which I do like. Farming productivity goes up too. Gain a production unit. It's 800 days though, that's quite a few. Uh, Las Bocas Dam. Or, you know, it's not bad, not bad. 820 days, 600 days for new international airport. I like less stimulation decay. And we completed what? The Pemex expansion? Nice, good stuff. New nuclear plant. It's not bad. 800 days, new steel plant. And the last one, new electricity plant. Unemployed population gets better. I think I might want to do this one. Base stimulation goes up. Better farm productivity, which is not bad. No, it's 50%. And it helps out the rural quality of life here. Now, base stimulation decay. Ah, Selene has to be the party leader there for that one. Um, I like less decay though. If you really want to prop it up, urban quality of life. You know what? I'm gonna go against what I normally want, and I'm gonna go with the dam. Hey, the corruption could be worse. Reduces project costs, and now we're in the northeast. We want the southeast. So here. 
what is this? Quality of life is roughly average, same average. Uh, it's much more rural. We have a lot of staple crops. And stimulation is, for the most part, a little above average. Basically average. So what do you complete with? Pemex? That's not bad. Madrazo's growing country leader. Interesting. Uh, new electricity plant. Stimulation impact. Base quality of life. A little more political, political power. Uh, what do we got here? Manuela Moreno Torres' dam. Base stimulation. Third electrical hydric plants. Base stimulation goes up by 3%. Roll quality of life goes up too. Well, they're basically the same thing. This one gives you a lot more farming productivity. But this is cheaper and is done faster. So, I'm going to go with that one. So, how's the war going over here? Women's supply, women's supply, operational strength. Vision concludes within the next two months, the outcome of the Puerto Plata invasion shall be decided. Providing intelligence, um, surgency strength, supply will increase. More guns, yeah, we can do that. More manpower. Uh, I really don't want them to lose. They're both that failed. Oh, that's not us. Okay, good. Woo! Happy May 1st, everybody. No, you're not allowed to lose. Come on. Rumblings from San Luis Potosi. President Lopez Mateo sits with a scowl in his office chair, a rare sight for the charismatic statesman, even in times of crises. Just as the effects of the Japanese financial crises are being fully understood and grasped, reports are trickling in about an organized protest in the rural central state of San Luis Potosi surrounding a certain Salvador Nava Martinez, the bleeding heart firebrand who famously challenged the PRI candidate for governorship, losing the 1961 election in the state. That rabble rouser Nava just can't seem to accept a loss, can he? That sly guy sees the suffering of the Kabuki effect as an opportunity for his own political game. President Lopez Mateo pesters his staffer. The escalating situation in San Luis Potosi would make sure his final years would see no shortage of action. Oh god, growth went down. What the heck does he even want? Upon skimming the reports and news articles, however, the main demand made by Nava rang loud and clear, nothing short of a complete overturn to the 1961 San Luis Potosi governor election. Glancing up from the files, the frustrated president leans back into his chair, pinching his nose. Just like Yara Milo, Nava had previously been negotiated with in the pri years prior, already having been released from prison in 61 after the public demanded as such. Oh, we release a guy, and our payment is a demand to overturn the election? B.S. The charismatic presence of Lopez Mateos and it built up, and its perceived reputation of leniency were beginning to rear its ugly side effects. The president thought to himself. He turns to a staffer. Keep me posted on this. Um, extend rent payments? The government has taken a decisive step to alleviate the financial burden on those affected by the current crisis by deferring rent payments. This, oh crap. Uh, this move will afford uh, those suffering from economic fallout so much needed breathing space to regain their financial stability. As a measure of that, at least in the short term, it is largely agreed upon within the party, however, this consensus breaks down with the question is asked about how long this moratorium should extend into the future. Unsurprisingly, it's Madrazo and the Cardenistas that seek to keep the policy in place for as long as possible and ensure the most renters have recovered, while the more pragmatic followers of Ordaz are concerned about the cost and impact of landowners that a prolonged period of less than rent revenue will bring. Ultimately, the success of either option will depend on how well it navigates this fine line between the economic relief for the renters and safeguarding the pro property market. They're in a Trujillo. In Ciudad Trujillo, the Grand German Embassy hosts a state dinner for the city's namesake. As cold rain splatters against tall windows, Trujillo feels the warmth of the German reception. The leader, arranged in his finest raiment, gorges on the fruits of his victory over the communist forces of the Caribbean Legion under their Yankee overlords. The guest of honor wobbles out of a seat to address arranged diplomats. Gentlemen, I thank you today for the great hospitality you have given me. We are lying in heart and spirit in this glorious celebration tonight. I swear swift and unswerving revenge on all those who stood against me. A polite applause washed over him, as his audience shared concerned looks. I can assure you, gentlemen, that the foreign devils that plague my great nation will be exercised, whether Mexican, Cuban, Haitian, or Yankee. They will be grounded to dust and forgotten until the nights they crawled. Trujillo jutted his drink into the air. Under a flickering streetlight in an empty, ready-mixed parking lot, a Chevy Biscayne sits idle, his body filled with bullet holes. Fat raindrops wash away the blood and oil onto the ground. Above all, I curse all the traitors that would threaten their homeland and would sell it out to foreign powers. On a cliff slick with fresh lane, Amado is placed in the sight of the sin, before him executed by the gun of a loyal soldier. Soon, the gods will reveal themselves and their plans, and those left behind will squeal like pigs stuck in the mud. In another corner of the city, a riled mob stained the floor of the papal nunciature with their muddy trespassing. El Turco defends his whole embassy, but even the giant goes down to their weapons. I once again thank you for your support and hospitality, Trujillo declared to immediate applause. Far from the warm celebrations and the cold downfall of hope, Antonio de la Maza stood, stands at the Haitian border. 
He will have to leave this place without knowing the fate of his comrades and begin an isolated life of hollow safety. But before that, he takes one last look at his home. The glorious reign of President Tujio will continue unimpeded. We'll see about that. And the taste of defeat. Oh, crap. For a moment, sweet. Then President Lopez Mateos got kicked in the mouth. Before the taste of his second shot of tequila subsided, he started pouring the third since the news of the Caribbean Legion's calamitous failure to reach Los Pinos. It would have been his fifth had he not spent 20 minutes berating Ordaz before dispatching him to shut down the Legion training camps and cover up any trace of Mexican involvement. Trujillo's assassins would be coming for him soon enough, but he didn't want to be hiding from foreign journalists as well. I knock on the door, assuming his voice on the other side. Forgive me, Your Excellency, but I'd like to share something that may be useful in this difficult time. A brusque grunt was sufficient welcome for the secretary, who entered the bearing a bottle of fine sake. The president and the nor Norteño locked eyes and laughed. Soon the door barely upright. Uh, a small force of shot glasses surrounding them on the president's desk. For perhaps the third time, Selena shared his theory of what had gone wrong. You see, uh, she out that for. It's typical Yankee adventurers, and Washington wants to dominate their surroundings. They couldn't risk a strong or independent legion. They ensnared us in the half-baked plan and pulled the button. A small voice in Lopez Mateos' mind called out that he and Castro had decided to, to back Trujillo's overthrow all on their own. Had cast away the lives of countless young men willing to fight for freedom. Had stretched and bent the Estrada Doctrine for the sake of a fool's errand. A swig straight from the bottle drowned that voice. His own croaked out. Darn right, Raul, darn right. Some drink to forget. The president's opinion, opinion of Selena's will increase by two. Some increase the stress of Lopez Mateos. D American disaster. Well, we'll see about that. The wait. Look at what you'd have been here by now, snarled Tony Embert. He sat both hands behind the wheel of the Biscayne, staring intently along the road to San Cristobal. Twenty minutes and not a single pair of headlights had passed since he last spoke, saying the exact phrase. As before, a perfectly still a model replied from the backseat that Intrusio was still coming. From the passenger side, Antonio de la Maza lit up a cigarette. Give it a rest, Tony. Modesto Diaz would see beer, and from his perch, de la Maza would have the first shot on him. Disturbed from his sleep or perhaps from prayer, Salvador answered, Diaz? He's practically at the center of the government. How? Don't get all high and mighty, Torco. We've all collaborated, de la Maza cut him off. As an awkward, angry silence lingered, he, he ashed his cigarette and said, Imagine how much worse it is for Pedro Levo, waiting out there alone in that stupid Oldsmobile for hours in the off chance we just miss a darn baby blue Toyota. That Toyota pet crown for Cruz Dom. An aged man slept fitfully in the back seat. He had not needed to sleep so much before, before the war. Before Castro and the filthy communists, the Yankees and the darn Mexicans started to sink in this land back into the chaos and poverty he had raised it from. He felt so old, but the schoolgirl waiting at San Cristobal would make him feel young again. Oh, yes. He chose him well tonight, an official's new bow daughter. Oh, boy. Oh. His reveries were disturbed by the blast of a horn and numerous shouts. Drunken hooligans? No. Old instincts his, sent his hand to his revolver. But the rear window exploded in a hail of glass and pain. So I made sure that these guys actually are still here. The United Dominican Revolutionary Front? Um, Dominican United Front, I guess. Anti-fascist champions. Um, specialized training. And, uh, yeah. Warner's Doctrine. Oh, he's gone. Spaniel in conflict, Iberian army engineers, national mobilization, and the new state. Wrath of the unheard. Anti PRI slogans surrounded Javier as he pushed a long way towards the crowd, towards the police checkpoint. Men and women were pressed in against one another, and the faces that Javier could see were contorted in fury. He felt one man behind him screaming with such anger that a spit was hitting the back of his neck, mixed with the sweat trickling down. The sun beat down hard. There's only one thing hotter than the humid air that choked him the anger of the protesters themselves. Javier had no time to question things that he once caught up in the crowd. It was not until the crowd reached a checkpoint that he began to regret ever becoming part of this. There were DFS mixed in with the police, and as soon as they got to the checkpoint, all hell broke loose. The batons came out, slamming to the first row of protesters. At first, the fury of the men and women around Javier held the tide against the DFS and police, but after a few had rifle busts slammed into them, knocking them into the ground, blood, and protesters began to scatter. And when the way opened for them to shove their way into the veins of the crowd, there was nothing to stop them. Violence swept over them like a wave, and Javier was frozen in place even as they came nearer and nearer. His legs felt stuck to the pavement. His breath caught in his throat until the baton of a policeman slammed into his chest and sent him hurtling onto the ground. More blows came, and a cascade of them slamming into his arms, legs, chest, and anywhere else the baton or boot could reach. If he didn't get away now, he'd be arrested or worse. Life finally returned to his legs, and if by providence itself, the policeman beating him was hit in the head by a rock from a nearby protester. His attention diverted, Javier scrambled to his feet, his feet and dashed to the nearest alleyway. He did not look back. No money was worth that heck. From headache to migraine. The President Lopez Mateos browses the shelves of his go-to sh shop near the Zocalo, a discreet store that was used to his business. Uh, while most of the goods have a shorter stock than usual, there is a complete lack of his favorite American drink. The thirsty president makes his way to the band running the place, annoyed at the predicament. I know things are hard with the Japanese goods daily, lately, but what are the coal in the aisle five? The owner responded, supply chain issues from the distributor in San Luis Potosi. Something to do with road blockages going up on up there. 
Lopez Mateo shook his head in disappointment and began to reach for his wall before something caught both their ears. As if waiting to be mentioned, the radio playing the news in the shop goes on about a massive protest underway in San Luis Potosi, led none other by then Salvador Nava. Reports of incidents by students in government buildings have arrived today who are allegedly accompanied by disgruntled PRI officials. This is in addition to the earlier street protests by the Senecas and rail unions earlier in the week that brought the state running into a... Lopez Mateos tosses the pesos onto the counter, storming out towards his car on the street corner in anger. How does this information even make it past the press restrictions to the national radio? Now, and his diverse little gang of dissenters cannot be put off any longer, the president decides. He gets into the passenger seat, turning to his driver. Take me to the National Palace now. There's only a few minutes away. A cabinet meeting would be convenient. Oh boy. Baseline simulation for all regions. Jesus Christ, this is bad. Learn to bait. The hour was late, but Madrazo and Ordaz were still awake, discussing the government's continued response to the, to the Kabuki effect. As victims of the Japanese layoffs continued to pile up, concern began to grow over their ability to financially keep their heads above water. Madrazo and Ordaz had both agreed to the general framework of a potential solution, extending rent payments in an effort to take financial pressures off the Kabuki effect victims, but the devil was always in the details. We cannot afford to take a weak position on this, Gustavo, Madrazo said, his voice filled with passion and confidence. These workers are not going to be able to just easily pick themselves up and move on from this. They will need as much time and assistance as we can give them and more. If we fail now, they may never recover. Carlos, I understand your position. I promise, I truly do. What does began, however, you must realize that the workers are not the only ones in peril here. If we are too generous now, the business community will take further fright. If we cause further damage to the bottom lines, our investments will dry up and these workers will have no employers to hire them. The debate continued on and on, but both men knew the pressure they were under. Um, they needed to act quickly, and a poor decision was far better than no decision. So after a rigorous debate, the details of the rent extension were finally agreed upon. Act with a conviction, offer a generous extension. Worker loyalty, worker support for Ordaz and Montrazo increase. Act with caution, offer a conservative extension. So we're, we're over here, so I spent a lot of political power. So we actually got the workers for Ordaz. Actually, that's really freaking good. Um, so Ardaz is here, and Salinas has everyone else. Wow, Madrazo, we've destroyed him, basically. Wow, literally zero. Holy crap, that's kind of ins insane. So right now, the crest will continue. Um, but the party bureaucrats are going to choose a person in two days, which will affect this side too. So failing to sway the party bureaucracy will penalize the other faction's loyalty. So if we help the party bureaucracy, that'll give us maybe some more leverage for these guys too. So... We want to do whatever helps the industrialist for us. Even though, um, so it's really this one. Worker loyalty will increase. Nice. Worker support for both of us will increase. It's fine. Boop, boop. And also we did that thing earlier here too. Ooh, poverty got worse. Economy is looking slightly better. Deficit went, is getting better. P growth is getting better. Inflation is not too bad actually e either. Um, how about the Mexican miracle? Still have 25 days, so we can close out this one for now. Cool. Battle of Buena Vista. Rodrigo Alvarez tapped his foot to the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That would be the extent of the dancing for the night. His two younger sisters finally convinced Ozu to let them attend the nightly dance in the courtyard in the following housing complex. And with Miguel gone, Rodrigo would keep watch. Follow teenagers in what formal dress they could afford, humming the tunes of the day and practicing their dances, hoping to land a show to love it with one of their neighbors. Up and down, out and around, the neighborhood boys go over routine while Rodrigo keeps his nonchalant look in the corner, a flimsy mask hiding his intense envy. He spot Maria hanging with Crispin and some no good, bo no good boy next door who's bound to get them in trouble and when in the center of the courtyard, an uproar occurs. You got it, Camelia, keep going. He barely makes out his sister through the circle formed around her, everyone clapping to cheer her on, though Rodrigo wasn't looking at them for their dance moves. Why are they all so pretty, so fair skim? How can he stand any chance with his, with his dark tone, a constant target of mockery from all the other boys? Heck, even his family? Throughout all the machismo, he hides his face, his tears begin streaming down, he too wishes to dance, he too wishes for love. Rodrigo takes one more look at the scene, spotting an off-duty soldier joining in the fun, taking Camilla for yet another dance to the joy of the onlookers. The soldiers just looked like him, his indigenous complexion not getting in the way of his enjoyment, at least from what Rod Rod Rodrigo could tell. Rodrigo whimpers, for his battle's never ending. Mixed messaging, we want less pack strength. Oh, where are we off for the pack strength? Oh, I'll read this one, the feats of the goat. Ah, the Chevy closed in on Chujio's crown. Burst of rifle fire ripping away his blue paint. The motor howled into the night before our fourth fusillade sent the Toyota careening out the road. Imbert hit the brakes and spun hard left in the pursuit of the prey. The assassins came to halt on a hillside field. The ravaged Toyota illuminated by high beams mere meters away. Hands clasped shotguns as they rushed out of the car. A burst of automatic fire from Trujillo? No, his driver. Scattering, they took cover. Bullet holes sprouted across the Chevy. Shattering glass spring, Amado peered around the sedan's front but pulled back clutching his bleeding knee. 
Generalissimo Raphael Trujillo, benefactor of the nation, El Jefe, the goat, staggered into the light. His shoulder was splattered with blood, but the grip on his revolver was firm. He leaned against the toyo pet, uh, uh, searching for a target, until Pedro Livio's faded Oldsmobile roared up from behind, a momentary distraction for the dictator and his driver. Tony's browning boomed, and Trujillo's most loyal servant fell, swallowed by darkness. Antonio de la Maza slid from behind the Biscayne, leveling his own shotgun at Tavito's murder. Suppressing the fire rang out from behind Antonio, but the only response was a pain cry from the distant Pedro Livio. The dictator's revolver swung to, side, swung to fire on de la Maza, but Antonio shot first. Trujillo's gun hit the ground along with all three of his fingers. Oh. The goat fell, gasping as his foes crept to surround him, his remaining hand on the crown. He sought to haul himself up once more, to fix him with his stare. The one that had held them in check that held the Republic mesmerized for 30 years, but it would be no more for Tevito, Luisa. For the 14th of June, for the church, four triggers clicked, and Rafael Trujillo was blown apart. There we go, cutting the rope loose. Oh boy. <laughs> the Japanese corporations that have established a significant foothold in Mexico are currently reeling from the ripple effects of the turmoil that is engulfing their homeland. The severity of the situation is that such that most of them are facing the grim prospect of going under unless they receive substantial aid from the state. Ordaz and uh, uh, Madrazo are quite content with this fact. The money that could bail them out would be much more valuable in helping out Mexico directly, and the loss of some Japanese influence will be something to celebrate for many. Madrazo will appreciate the weakening of Japanese imperialism, while Ordaz will find it much easier to approach the Americans without the restraint of Japanese interests. So, that's, that's good. Ooh, it decreases GDP by 2%. Ooh. They're all hurting here. On Death's Door. The dark blanket of night embraces the home of Pupo Roman. Within his living room, the homeowner sits nervously just, with just the ticking of an old clock to keep him company. The light remains, light remains switched off, and his wife and children sleep silently upstairs. After hours, car headlights illuminate him through the window, breaking him from his dark stupor. He exits for the moment of enlightenment. On his drive now sits an idle Chevy Biscayne. His occupants, uh, Tony Embert, Antonio de la Mazo, and uh, Amadito, are silent as the night they just cut through. Ember glanced into his rearview mirror and jutted a thumb to the back seat while Roman was looking for his heir. He opened the door with trembling hands, robbed of his glorious raiment, and covered in nothing but a bloodstained sheet was the ravaged body of Trujillo. Roman stared transfixed at what was once a man, his hands relaxed on the door handle as his face warm. All thoughts and fears associated with, un with Trujillo flushed away as a spell of control and submission the dictator held over Roman was broken. Job's not done. A second car pulled up into the scene, El Turco in an Oldsmobile. He too has a man in his back seat close to death, but not quite there. Pedro Livio has been laid in the back seat, slowly leaking blood from bullet wounds. What do we do about him? He got caught in some friendly fire. Work it out, Roman. The hands of Turco hastily jotted a list of phone numbers to his DFS and FBI connections. As life is in your hands, if you'll excuse me, I have a coup to launch. Pupil Roman returns to his home with a renewed sense of purpose. Any lingering doubts or fears he may have still harbored were gone. He spent the rest of the night hunched over his house phone, fingers still growing numb from the incessant dialing and his voice hoarse from the numerous commands declared. The military was to be mobilized, and the family of Trujillo and brothers were to be arrested. Only after that would Roman be able to rest. Soon the one will be replaced by many. Nice. A tragedy begets misery. Uh, I was told I'd receive a cash balance. No, please, you can't turn me away. I need this money. I have your plea with the bank teller, but she seemed deaf to his pleas. He finally stepped aside, letting another other protesters try and ban to receive their pay from this mysterious benefactor. Whoever he was, he might as well have been saying himself for all Javier cared because of him. His body ached from four dozen bruises scattered across his body. His ribs throbbed, and it still hurt even to walk. He had nowhere else to go. Mexico City was still reeling from the riots, so he had, he'd be hard-pressed to find work here besides. He knew there were some opportunities up north, but that meant leaving the only home he'd ever known. He had worked at that Mitsubishi factory for almost a decade. He supposed he could find work in a, a maquiladora up north. At the very least, he knew he, enough that he could be an asset. He also knew those who moved to the United States to work for a few years, saving up enough cash to start a better life when returning home to Mexico. He also heard that the work the Americans put you through was backbreaking, whether it was in a plantation in Texas or California. Suppose the party of uh, the revolution, what a joke, Javier thought, before he protested against them simply because it might get him paid. And yet now he could feel a small fire burning inside him. The fire didn't seem blazing through those protesters. He would flee Mexico City and his home so they might scrape by, but he would never trust in the PRI again. And his heart only resentment or Look at that. Support our dives. So Salinas. So where are we at with this? So we cracked down on this, on subversive elements. Um, industrial loyalty will slightly decrease, so we have another month. To get here. 34. Workers support him. Which is good. And Salinas. Oof. Madrazo. Actually, if we increase Madrazo's support, that could lower Salinas' support. Or does. Does. Yeah, crackdown subversive elements would probably be good. Prevents Salinas from making moves.
Temper anti fear growths. Hmm. Oil subsidy deal. Increase or does and its support. What is this? Well, slightly increase. Slightly increase. Pledge to expand the quotas of all oil production to reduce the price or to satisfy the growing industrial demand. Industrial loyalty. So, what do we have for industrial loyalty? It's still very good. The Nava Crisis. Tension's 55. Pack strength is 0. But so really helps out or does. Every 10 days, all of our current pack strength gets a slight decrease in all faction support from Madrazo and a slight increase for Ordaz. Oh, that's good. Hmm. So we need a lower tension still. Intensified negotiation efforts. More loyalty. DFS loyalty will fall apart, though. We don't want to do this one. Mixed messaging? You have more political power. That'd be nice. A little bit more political power. Pack strength is already low, though. We need more ascension. Worker support for does will slightly increase. And withdraws, though. DFS support for does will increase, too. Mm, question experience. Industrial support will go up for us. Deliberate sabotage. Worker support will increase very slightly. Defense support and industrial support. Flex the establishment. Well, I don't know if we can actually get these guys. Because right now, industrial support will go up. Madrazo support will go up, which is nice. If we can get at least the industrialists and the workers, that'd be great. But we need a DFS too. We're not gonna have enough political power, are we? Cannot fail. So uh, you know what? I guess we can sacrifice this. As long as we have the workers, we've got the party bureaucracy. The DFS. Let's focus on the DFS the most. Mm. DFS support will slightly increase. That's 15 political power. It does increase pack strength, but you get weekly stability, which you do like. DFS, DFS, DFS. Will very slightly increase. I like this one too. And if we come over here. What options do we have? Negotiation efforts. Loyalty will decrease, which is fine. DFS support for Ordaz will decrease. Not good. Increase operational autonomy. DFS support will increase. Loyalty will slightly increase. Criminality will very slightly increase. Faction will go down. That's, that's perfect. Industrial support will decrease. Huh. Monitor DFS paper trail. Fuel. They will both decrease, but there's already zero, so whatever. Hmm, interesting. So we definitely want this one. Just for support, we'll go up. And get some weekly stability. I do like the one too. But I want to lower DFS loyalty. I don't want to increase pack strength. Yeah, it's not good to take either. Oh, do we increase the autonomy of them? Fuel agent paranoia. Do that one anyways. The Toad's Lair. 015-0515. Capture the SIM headquarters and join ABS. Put down the ongoing coup attempt, the Colonel ordered. The captain now slowly then moved decisively into action. His attachment was loaded into the Jeeps and departed the Alamo Rosa Garrison. 0540. The Duarte Bridge was blocked by the Black Volkswagen Beetle. The colonial quarter beyond was swarming with a thousand armed Sim Calais. Uh, uh, regrouping from their failed attack on their national palace. The captain orders men to advance blood spilling into the Oma Ozama. 0620. Reinforcements and armor allow the captain and his diminished detachment to press down on the last El Conde Street. The tank crushed carpaces, uh, carapaces of the VW bug barricade but slowly Calais fired upon the soldiers from the second story windows and balconies. Casualties are many. 0650. The army has surrounded the block. Holdouts remain in the Sim headquarters, the town hall, and in the Hotel El Condo. Four tanks parked under the slender tree of Colon Park sent shell after shell in its colonial style facade. An acrid mix of smoke and tear gas filled the captain's mouth. 0755. 
The captain led an assault into the blaster and smoking headquarters building, all that remained of the CIM's hold. Fanatical defectors were shot room by room until the flames from burnt documents and explosions grew too intense, and the military withdrew. Some Kellers attempted to do the same, hands were raised and surrendered, but were shot down. 1235, five friends had put out the blades and the guns had fallen silent. In a sealed office, the captain found a wall splattered with brains, a self-inflicted gunshot through the head of Johnny Abs, a quick end to the torture who had denied that mercy to so many. Mission accomplished, no survivors reported. When do we get this one done? Oh, we have gone three days. God dang it. And Freedom Shadow. In a sweltering basement, an FBI safe house disguised in an unprofitable workshop in a hidden street in Ciudad Trujillo. Four men watched their ally grapple the closest of death. In the chaos of change, Pedro and Levio had been shot, but such martyrdom was not inevitable. A call was shouted upon the quietest of channels, and a local Dominican doctor was ushered to the FBI safe house by DFS operatives. His operating tail was arranged as sterilely as, secretly, as secrecy allowed. The doctor, a consummate professional, asked no questions beyond his station. All he asked was where the bullets had struck and how long ago before, uh, before the beginning of his operation. Tony Imbert, Antonio de la Maza, and Salvador watched anxiously from a distance. With bated breath, they watched two operating tables, one the size of a man and the other an entire island. The intertwined fates of a man and a nation. They have the faith that they will both pull through. In another room, Almadito listened intently to the news, murmuring from a tiny, tinny radio. The sounds were difficult to decipher, but they didn't want to interrupt their operation. He hoped that all their work would be worth it. It was out of their hands now. Tonight, happy to announce death of new civil military-led government. Ah! Almadito stifled a shot for joy before showing it to the others. Here, get in. News of the coup. The Trujillista order has fallen. The men, lost in their sudden relief, all piled in the adjoining room began to celebrate. A couple of bottles of tequila swirled away for such a hopeful moment were opened and poured greedily. All the previous stress of coups and waiting was wiped away, but the light of the future remained bright. Uh, the doctor took off his gloves and wiped his hands clean. His own uh, patient stable, he couldn't help but share in the smiles. Democracy is born in darkness. So, 28 days. So we really need to focus on the DFS. The cry of Mexico City. Oh, look at this. Yay! Viva la revolución. Viva. Gustav Diaz Ordaz prided himself on keeping a straight face against all challenges. Fernando Gutierrez Baldios had learned to play his cards straight to the chest, to conceal his true feelings, but a brief glance between the two was mutually understood. He neither knew why they were here. All they knew is that Lopez Mateos had called him to his office in the Palacio Nacional at once. After a few moments of unacknowledgement, Lopez Mateos reached under a stack of papers and pulled out a book, a textbook, for secondary schoolers. Secondary schoolers. On the cover were drawings of Zapata, Villa, and Obragón. This, Lopez Mateos began, is the first standardized textbook on the Mexican Revolution. Because of our efforts, every child in Mexico will receive it free of charge in the history class. They can hear the same stories, see the same heroes, and understand the truth of the revolution, and they can understand their need to fight ignorance and poverty today as these men fought against Diaz and Huerta back then. But there's a problem with it, Ordaz and Barrio stared blankly. We just wrote another book about the revolution. But we can't publish it. A smile broke across the sleeves. We crushed another dictatorship, not at home, but abroad. We stood up and put a stop to Trujillo. We showed the world the Mexican Revolution is a Mexican. Every man in Latin America can follow the trail we tread and end the universal evils of disenfranchisement and neglect. Make no mistake, this is one of the proudest moments in the history of Mexico. But if even a fraction of the story got out, we would be crucified for it. I cannot shout it from the balcony over there like the Grito. We cannot celebrate it like the oil expropriation. We cannot put this new book into the hands of every Mexican child, but I can tell you exactly how I feel right now. If I cannot tell the world of Mexico, the world or Mexico itself, and eventually our nation will know that what we've accomplished in the Dominican Republic. So, now do we want rum or tequila? Nice. Tackling novel. The morning sun beams through the single, large window in the conference room in the National Palace, illuminating the Mexican cabinet members, all of which were in attendance at rare sight. At the head of the table lies President Lopez Mateos, bringing the room to a quiet halt after announcing the meeting will begin. I see you all come here today to address escalating situation in San Luis Potosi, and for that I give my thanks, as the situation cannot be put off any longer. Pleased to see his government working together for once, the aging president's cadence is unbroken. Gesturing to the new face at the table, the president introduces the well-known firebrand of Tabasco, Carlos Madrazo. At our dad's insistence, the brought in Licenciado Madrazo, who will hopefully spearhead any diplomatic approach with Nava. Many in the room, including Salinas, looks visibly skeptical at the thought of a diplomatic approach. After all, had that not been taken two years prior when he was released from prison? However, the president cut off any potential opposition. This will be done in tandem with Ordaz leading police suppression efforts of Nava's movement. With enough pressure and an open hand, we should be able to quell this nonsense movement with ease. The small tension in the room is released and work on details begin. The meeting mostly goes off without a hitch, with our respective ministers giving their concerns for the plans. From the potential popular repercussions of suppressing the movement, to the probable economic slowdowns that will surely be caused by transport interruptions in the San Luis Potosi during the crackdown, most of the concerns have been mitigated by the end of the meeting and most seem pleased. Salinas lies in the corner of the table, however. 
with his cold gaze directed towards Ordazo and Madrazo. He'd been silent this time, though he wasn't taking it lying down, but the meeting's end, a plan has already begun hatching in his mind, one of more unorthodox nature. Uh, Ordaz and Madrazo will handle this. Oh, better economic stuff. Nice. Happy May 23rd. Boop. Goodbye. No hard feelings. Lopez Mateo's uh, pace of presidential office, his face a whirlwind of ever changing emotions. Fear reigned for a time. The Japanese were a fearsome superpower who had great influence in Mexico and were clearly not averse to the idea of starting resistance movements against the government. Anger took over in a rapid coup. What right did they have to dominate Mexico so? They should be punished for their abuses of the nation's sovereignty. Finally, a cold, hard, calculating feeling maneuvered to the head of his thoughts, and he sat down at his desk and began to write. Madrazo and Ordaz were rarely seen entering the same building, let alone the same room, yet the wounded state of a mutual enemy ensured that the two would have to work hand in glove. Mateo studied them for a moment, each eye the other with flashes of contempt and anticipation. Gentlemen, the situation with Japan has reached a point where a decision must be made. I have a report from the Tokyo Stock Exchange, Mateo's tapped a vanilla, or vanilla folder, and they are pleasing. It has become fairly obvious that the Japanese corporations in Mexico are nearly insolvency. I've been advised of a number of different things. Some call for bailouts. Madrazo and Ordaz both briefly smirked, for that certain sum was one of the few people that earned their mutual contempt. Others call for liquidation. I've chosen to take the more laissez-faire option. We let it be. Ordaz and Madrazo leaned in somewhat. Mateos was not known for deliberately taking a finger out of a pie. Mateos began pulling out folders, handing them to the men, each one bearing numerous telltale data points and explanations. If you read these, you'll see the reasons why. If Japan wants to keep doing business here, they should tell their lobbyists to be less brazen, or at least never lobby for causes that hurt our administration. Mateos sneered, self-satisfactorily. Nevertheless, I'm sure we will, some will quibble about it, and I know this will hurt many workers, but it's an unnecessary leveling of the playing field. Goodbye, gentlemen. I was not looking forward to telling Salinas the news. The current closes on the parse, plugging the gaps. That's not bad. I like stability. Ooh, it's better, though. Filling out the bottom. Definitely. This will help industrial support. Cool. Mexico is industrious within and even outside of the PRI are influential and likely to be uncooperative with our plans to relieve the nation's lower classes. However, the pseudo crisis has allowed us to sidestep their usual concerns. Since Japan's companies are in freefall, then we can cut subsidies and shift the funds towards solvent companies. Our poor will receive a rel relief and our riches will lose nothing. Uh, everyone walks away a winner. Uh, let's go put it there for now. Hey, that's looking, at least it's in the green. That's good. We're getting better. I'm plugging the gaps. Despite the distrust many felt towards the Japanese corporations, they were still large employers of Mexican workers. Their absence has already been felt, uh, with many workers now left unemployed and desperate for new jobs. The administration and the party agree that there's a necessity to fill this hole, although Madrazo and Ordaz, as usual, disagree on how. Ordaz wishes to invite American corporations to take the place of the Japanese and get Mexico closer ties to the American government. <clears throat> Now unbound from the threat imposed by Japanese economic influence. At the same time, Madrazo wants to keep things local, seeking an opportunity to grow local Mexican businesses while also deepening ties to the rest of Latin America while inviting some of the companies. Whatever the case, both sides agree that either option is undoubtedly an improvement from the Japanese. Yeah, they have literally no influence from Madrazo. Wow. Um, we have to have this. This is looking a lot better, though. Jack down on business elements. And just support will increase. Nice. I just don't think we can do that in time. So we have enough time now for this one. Uh, worker support, industrial support. This wouldn't be bad. We have only so much political power though. We'll slightly increase, slightly increase. Temper anti-growth fears. Well, let's take a look-see here. Tension is 65, which is not good. Ooh, we have to, we absolutely have to lower tension. We cannot have Salinas establish anymore. We have to lower tension no matter what. I'd rather lose it, lose the industrialists, as we lower tension. Next messaging. Tension would decrease by five. We could do that one. We lose weekly stability though. A firm pack commitments. Tension, tension, tension. No. Flex the establishment tension will decrease by 10. That's so much. Tension will increase. Yeah. A lighter touch as the evening drags on, exhausted or does reach the delays of several San Luis Potosi. 
police reports regarding the novel situation. Standing over his shoulder behind him, a comparatively chipper of Madrazo reads his own copy of the day's events. More sit-ins, more strikes, protests, the list just keeps getting longer, Ordaz gruntles, gruntles, pointing to a segment on the bottom half of the second page. You see this part? Nava surrendered to shut down all the rail lines in the region with his Union goons. He gets up and walks over to the phone on the other side of the room. The negotiations can come later. I'm calling the police there now and giving them the order. Wait, Ordaz, Madrazo calls him, you have all this backwards. Whatever you tell them, keep it live for now. If we crack down now, the people will go wild. Madrazo gestures out the window towards the city. However, if you let me negotiate first, the people will see an attempt at dialogue and reason. Let me try to avoid bloodshed for now, shall we? Ordaz puts the phone down, thinking about his colleague's line of reasoning. As much as he'd love to rid the problem child in its infancy, the government was already on thin ice with the Kabuki crisis as is. He reluctantly agrees. All right, diplomacy first, Sam. Ordaz shakes uh, hands with Madrazo, giving him a cold stare. Uh, but if nothing promises, promising comes to the soon, tough calls will have to be made. Ask questions first, shoot later. Hey, we got them. Barely. For now. That's pretty solid. And for Salinas, we tried. We tried, definitely. Industrial support. Oh. Hey. Uh, no attention goes down, though. The opener. Ordaz and Madrazo step out of the car, stretching their limbs in front of the... after the near 10-hour car ride to the San Luis Potosi. Local airport has been out of operation for weeks because of the strikes. Your nose is bleeding, Madrazo's relief. Is interrupted by Ordaz? Must be the altitude. Darn it, in lieu of any kind of doctor, the governor uses his handkerchief to wipe off the blood. In any case, Mr. Navas made his demands loud and clear, that being the removal of the existing governor. Madrazo could see Ordaz fuming already, something that cannot be done. Ordaz crept back, exactly. His demands are simply too large, which is why his movement must be clamped down upon. Madrazo gives a cautious look, uh, though lets Ordaz elaborate. If we show the power we have over him, his demands might shift to something more amendable. Ordaz, well, I'm happy that you are at least open to negotiations. Nava isn't even at the table yet. A token of goodwill is needed. Madrazo said they arrived at the local PRI headquarters. Ordaz looked confused. The token of goodwill? Their token is the fact that the DFS hasn't shot Nava yet. All they propose is a legal permit for the protest to continue. And Madrazo kept his composure. Nothing more. That should at least bring him to the negotiating table. President Lopez Mateos was waiting for results and a decision had to be made. Ordaz's proposal wins out. The police get sent in. Six days left. Yeah. Tension is still oh, way too freaking high. Whoa! A very tense, a very tense group here. We're gonna drop our stability like crazy. What is this? Uh, yeah, we don't want that one. Potential decrease though, which is nice. Filling at the bottom. I love filling at your bottom. Anyways, clamping the beast in place. Oh, holy crap! Whoa! Yeah, that's not good. Oh, the golf is full. Uh, during the first night of the negotiations, as most of the bureaucrats retired home for the day, the PRI headquarters light darkened, blending in for the most part with just another office building in the array of structures lining the downtown strip. This changed with the second night, however, as from then until the end of the negotiations, the lights on the second floor remained shining, with the silhouettes of party men and police officers dashing back and forth across the windows, and their hands lie paperwork and DFS intelligence reports, and all were being directed by a single man. The son of Ordaz yelling over the chatter and shouting orders could be heard across the street, only broken when it handed a piece of paper stopping to read it. The old machine sought to get on top of the protest the next day. They had found out where, when, and how, all before the sun even peeked out over the mountains. As the night ended and the day began, a parking lot west of downtown became the assembly point of what would be a march, undertaken by the union men and students alike. Seemingly unopposed for the first 30 minutes, the protesters were shadowed by undercover officers who relayed positions back to Ordaz's office. As soon as the protest began moving out, Ordaz radioed the police captain, You are clear to move in. Within minutes, the entire law was surrounded by a wall of police who proceeded to kettle the protesters into a corner against a neighboring commercial complex, unable to move, and mostly unarmed. The vast majority were arrested without a fight. After Ordaz received the news, he retired to his hotel room to rest, though only for a couple hours. So what do we got? We got the Femex expansion. Great. What do we want here? Unemployed population? New nuclear plant? That seems pretty good to me. New international airport, 600 days, 800... I like less decay. But there's only so much time we have for this campaign. Base stimulation. I mean, if we're playing like 10, 15, 20 years, obviously what we're doing for stimulation decay would be better, I think. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Ah, here we go. Foreign productivity. 
Present loyalty will increase. Get more political power, which I like. Rural quality of life. Um... No, we're gonna do it here. No, we're not. Yeah. There's a spell one percent, it's already very good. There you go. So now we gotta really make sure we get the workers. Because right now, where are we at? We got a month left. We can get there in time. Increase the workers or decrease decrease Salinas' to support. The workers in Pieces, but we don't have that yet. And this one is a little more of a challenge, but we have a little more time for that one. Worker support. That's yeah, fine. A slightly increase. Um, tension will increase by five. We don't want this one, but it does prevent Linus from making moves. We don't want this one because we. Oh, uh, we don't want this one to happen. Tax strength increases? No. Mm. So if we increase the strength of both of them, that will lower Salinas' support, doesn't it? Worker power will still increase. More support from Madrazo and Ordaz would help out. Tension will decrease too. Oh, we have to do this one. Oh, is there another global thing here? Oh. Tensions continue to decrease. Our preparation will decrease by eight. Oh. The American Republicans the Latin American harbor for the world's most vital ideology. Yeah. Tension is stable. Prepare the rebels for the scenario of a civil war. The higher the preparation, the stronger they will be. Establish commercial ties. Huh. I mean, we can spend our command power on money. DFS power and loyalty will increase. Preparation will increase. Tension will decrease. Does this do anything for us? Preparation will decrease by 8. Prepare the rebels for the coming civil war. I guess. P PRI low, uh, popularity goes up. More political power would actually be really nice. Interesting. The Dominican ceasefire. So it's still going to go and happen. Poverty is looking way better though. Mixed messaging. Where's the tension level now? Still 65. That's not good. Our economic security. The car slinked away towards the presidential residence. Ordaz with his jaw held tight as he thought about meeting with, with while Madrazo sat silent on the opposite end of the car. The particular sectors of the economy, the manufacturing sector in particular, which were in desperate need of investment after the Japanese had to retract so much of their investment. The problem? They only had so much money to spend and the American and Mexican companies were fighting bitterly over the spoils in hope of coming out on top. And Ordaz and Madrazo had made clear in their insinuations with the business leader says to whom do they preferred. The car last pulled up along the driveway and the two of them. Stepped out into the hot Mexican sun just as Mateo stepped out to greet them. Welcome, gentlemen. I hope this meeting was a success. Mateos gave a brief smile before waving them to join him on a walk through the gardens. As they did, Mateos continued, They understand that we will be investing in the manufacturing sector in the particular, correct? Your Excellency, Madraza replied as Ordaz pursed his lips. They understood yes, but the American business leaders made clear that they wish for more investment than the Mexican business leaders. And the same was true for the Mexican companies. If we were to do as the Americans want, then it would be, make us look like we were selling our country out for easy money. And if we did as the Mexican business leaders wanted, Ordaz added, um, we would be ignoring valuable investment which could reinvigorate our economy. Your Excellency, we must be prudent. Mateos frowned as he heard this and gave brief thoughts as how to best respond, but when it came to him, it seemed only the natural answer. We must put the economy first, we will focus on the Americans. Pack, strength of decrease, it's not bad. The independence of our economy is essential. Our companies will take precedence. Yeah, I know, we got this one. Decrease by five, whatever. And largely increase. So where are we at with this uh, the Mexican miracle? So Japan doesn't care for us. And we're 26 out of 25 for the American witnesses. Wow. Okay. Looking okay. Not great. 
Hmm. No close. <sighs> yeah. No cooperation. What the heck is this all about? Nava says as he storms into the negotiating room, pointing at Madrazo. How the heck am I supposed to approach this negotiation in good faith when you're just arresting my people in mass outside on the street as we speak? <laughs> Uh, licenciado, this is only a road. Mazdrazo was quickly cut off. You, you claim to be on the side of the people, but ultimately you are just as corrupt and a kid as, as the rest of the party screw ups you hang around. Nava picks up the papers uh, and calls after his aides as he walks out. Let's leave this before we get to get arrested. For a moment, there was a silence, and all I could be heard was the whirling of a ceiling fan, the sound of cars outside as a PRI delegation took their things out of the room, and Tora Daz came through the door walking towards Madrazo. What would you like to know? Or would you. What would you know? The man who is illegally shutting down the city with strikes seems to be acting in bad faith. Madrazo shakes his head. I almost had him too. I could feel it. The governor points towards the people on the streets of the San Luis Potosi outside. I know a man like this for San Ordaz. With the whole of this man has on those people, he shakes his head. The situation here is going to deteriorate drastically, and I'm not sure we're equipped to deal with it. Ordaz is not phased at all, however. No need to worry, Madrazo. This was an expected outcome, one that I've already prepared for. He looks out the window at the people crossing the street. What happened last time with the march and the police, he looks back at Madrazo is nothing compared to what is coming. I think doing both will actually be very good. Raise the minimum wage. So right now, with this, tension is too high. But every day, gives a slight decrease in all factions every 10 days, and all factions support for Madrazo and a slight increase for Ardaz. So if we increase Madrazo, we can thereby increase Madrazo support, increase lowers Selene's support, and even though Mordrazo's support goes down, that could that extra added effect that from his support will also be split between Ordaz, hopefully, as well as Salinas. So maybe we do that. We can think about that. Increase both their support at the same time, maybe. Because how many more days? We got uh, 20 days. We can only get so much political power here. And no more attention. Potential will decrease by five, which is good. Mixed messaging. Potential will decrease again. Fifteen political power. You can get uh you lose political power in the end, but still. Mm. Worker support from a draws will increase, which is nice. Pack strength will increase by five, which we can afford. Worker support will both increase, so. We're gonna risk this one. Where are we at now? Still possible, still possible. Work support. Se oh, 17 days. We have 17 days? We do have 17 days. Oh, man, that's going to be tight. Three days, Crescent continues. Oh, work support goes down. That's, that's, that's stupid. And words and outwards. Madrazo, we invite corporations from America and Canada to replace the Japanese ones. We'll be able to get the workers back working again sooner rather than later, alongside filling the gap left behind them more effectively so unemployment levels don't remain high as long as they would if we went with your idea. The Adam will be able to receive more income and taxes generated by the companies. Not to mention that I hope relations with their two neighbors up north. Mordrazo looked up his par partner from the sheet of papers he had been reviewing. Mordrazo faced the man before trying to get his point across again. And what I'm saying, Ordaz, is that if we instead focus on the small people of Mexico, and by what I mean the ejitos, small businesses, and the slightly bigger medium ones, we'll be able to give all that to our own people here in Mexico. And along with that, by emphasizing tourism, we'll be able to bring capital from around the world here in Mexico. And they'll even revitalize sectors of our economy if there's enough tourists and cash flowing around. Lopez Mateos watched the two having their pseudo dispute, as he considered both their suggestions on how to handle the exodus of Japanese companies. Ordazo's plan will fulfill the vacuum left behind by the exodus so there will be no worry about stability, along with improving relations. On the other hand, Madrazo's keep it here idea was something that could create a boon for the economy, given that it all pays back dividends and doesn't fail. Now it's time for Matt choosing which one you want to go with. Ooh. Mexican economic interest be something. You know what? Madrazo's correct. That's right, we're going to do that one definitely. That gives us a little more political power to play with. Pack strength will decrease. We have how long will this last? For 14 days. We're almost there. Uh huh. DFS support will increase, as well as worker support will increase. I'm okay with that and prevents them from making moves. We're going with that one then. Emergency relief package. While freezing rents and lowering interest rates have helped mitigate the current economic crisis, there's broad consensus within the party that these measures alone are not sufficient and that direct stimulus is required to bolster the economy and provide immediate relief to the ordinary Mexicans. However, when it comes to specifics on how this direct aid should be implemented, a clear divide emerges. 
The majority favor the straightforward approach of distributing checks directly to individuals, providing an immediate financial injection to those affected by the crisis. In contrast, a significant faction led by Madurazo advocates for a more comprehensive approach. They view this crisis as an opportunity to initiate uh, structural reforms to Mexico's social services. Their goal is not only to provide immediate relief, but also establish a robust system for citizens, both in times of crisis and during periods of relative stability. Their perspective uh, emphasizes long-term improvements aiming to transform this moment of crisis into an opportunity for enduring societal change. Ooh. Ooh, happy July, everybody. Can we flip this back to blue? Oh, I got a little better. Um, so with all these other effects, we should be okay with the workers. Um, where are we at for the DFS? It's a gap of about roughly five, so we can definitely do that. And then we got to figure this one out. Uh, the Tabasco solution. While many of our governors flail about the province of salvaging what remains in the wake of the crisis, one has stood out for the remarkable recovery of his state, Carlos Madrazo de Tabasco. Dubbed the Tabasco approach. His popular recovery strategies earned the attention of his millions, and his influence on the left wing of the party is remarkable. Bringing him on to the nationwide seems to be a matter of, if not when, we uh, let, lest we let, let Kabuki get the best of us. I the simulation goes up. That's pretty good. I like this one. Or intertwine interests. Ooh. You get less monthly stimulation. Same stability, but more growth. It's a sad fact that empathy in times of crisis is not always guaranteed as the Kabuki effect ripples across our economy. We must take steps to ensure that all of Mexico comes together to resolve the situation. Everyone must be connected and in cooperation across the country, and they must know a basic fact about this crisis. If we fail, everyone fails. So I think we're going to end it there. We're trying the best we can. We're doing the, well, we, uh, we're, whatever we can, and getting ready for everything to explode here, too. So, If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, as we'll see what else we can do with good old Mexico. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.